Okay, so this masterclass is all about how to use the law of attraction Ayurveda to reach your fitness goals and really transform your life. So this is all about changing your mind and changing your body. When you do the internal work, that is how you manifest external results. So you are in the right place if you are currently on your wellness journey or if you're interested in adopting a healthier lifestyle. If you're open to learning and applying spiritual practices, including the law of attraction, manifestation, Ayurveda, mindfulness into your life, if you're ready to move past your self-limiting beliefs, keeping you from achieving your goals in fitness and really in life, if you're seeking a sense of mind-body balance and cultivating self-love, if you're wanting to deepen your spirituality and get more connected to yourself at the soul level, you're not in the right place. If you're looking for a quick fix to just lose weight in like a few weeks, 10 pounds, one week, nope. <laughs> or you're looking to gain muscle really quickly, this is a marathon on Sprint Guys. So if you're looking for a quick fix, this probably isn't for you, but you will see results very quickly if you put these practices in place. If you are prioritizing your physical looks above all, above your mental strength and your overall well being, this isn't the right place for you. If you're unwilling to get uncomfortable and really be honest with yourself about what's stopping you from achieving your goal, this again isn't really for you because we are going to be digging pretty deep into subconscious and limiting beliefs. This isn't for you if you're totally turned off by anything that seems quote unquote woo woo or spiritual. We are going to be talking about law of attraction, manifestation, and Ayurveda. If you are resistant to change or releasing the ego, again, this probably isn't for you because we're trying to access the soul level. What will be covered? So first we're going to talk about the core principle that everything is essentially energy. We're going to be talking about the subconscious mind, how your habits and your patterns and your beliefs are rooted in it. We're going to talk about how fitness is far beyond just the physical and really doesn't have too much to do with your body, but has a lot to do with your mind. We'll be talking about intention and goal setting so that you can make soul aligned goals that are rooted in good intention and not rooted in the ego. We'll also be talking about Ayurveda from this perspective of nutrition and exercise. So you will learn a lot about that as well. So if you don't know me already, I'm Chelsea. I'm a mind body wellness coach who integrates fitness, nutrition with spirituality. So I infuse spiritual practices, including the law of attraction, manifestation, Ayurveda, with modern exercise and nutritional science to help people achieve their fitness goals and reach their fullest potential in life. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about my own journey of how I went from embarking on a fitness journey, which then led me on a pretty deep spiritual path, and how it really awakened me and has given me a completely different perspective on the world, on my reality, on my body, and really who I am. So to give a very quick overview of my own personal story. So it all goes back to high school for me. So my father was an entrepreneur. We were living in a beautiful multi-million dollar house. We were financially very abundant. I thought I was living it up and the 2008 recession hit and my father lost his business and we lost everything. My father got us in over a million dollars of debt, hundreds of thousands of dollars of liens placed against our home, which essentially kept us from being able to sell it. And this literally shattered my entire life, my entire family. So it broke my parents' relationship apart. It created an extremely, extremely toxic living environment for me that I had to deal with through high school and a bit of college. And it completely removed all my sense of control over my life. And my entire life, I was very much a control free, kind of a type A person, perfectionist. And Having this really strip away my power was terrifying to me at that moment just because I wanted to control my life. I wanted to manifest my reality and I felt like I couldn't and I felt a victim to my circumstances. And so in desire for more sense of control and to really change my reality, I thought if I change my body, 
that's something that I can, I can easily control. And if I change my body, maybe I'll be happier. Fell into that, that common trap a lot of us do. So this developed into an eating disorder. It developed into an exercise addiction and it just heightened depression, anxiety, and OCD tendencies. So I went from 125 pounds at five foot four down to 90 pounds in just a few short months. And I was incredibly weak. My hair would fall out. I lost my period. I had an extremely poor relationship with food. I would be fearful of foods if they weren't quote unquote clean. And foods that I once ate all the time, like ice cream and cookies and whatever, I was so terrified that if I ate even just a bite of it, it would make me fat. Totally wrong. <laughs> I also had a really bad sense of body image. I believed that at 90 pounds, I still had fat to lose. And it was so crazy and distorted. And I remember exercising for hours a day and trying to burn at least a thousand calories through exercise and then only eating like 700 calories a day. So you can do the math. That makes no sense at all. And it's extremely unhealthy. And I was so just in a depressive, low vibe state. My home environment was toxic. I wasn't nourishing myself mentally or physically properly. And I felt broken and very helpless in that moment of time. So fast forward a little bit after the eating disorder. So I then found a YouTube video online talking about this thing called flexible dieting. And it was essentially saying that food is just energy and your body doesn't really know if you're eating a donut or if you're eating broccoli. It just knows how many protein, how many carbs, how many fats, what vitamins, what minerals are in the food. And it all made a lot of sense to me. I had taken, of course, a biology class, chemistry in school, and scientifically it made sense. And so I decided to just try it out because at that time I was just hopeless. I was super hungry all the time. I had no social life because I was just exercising and not eating any food. And I figured there has to be a better way. I cannot keep doing this. So I remember adding in one pop tart every day for a week and seeing if I would still have six pack abs. And sure enough, I looked exactly the same, still had six pack abs and ate a pop tart every day. And so then I started slowly incorporating more of the food that I was once terrified of eating and just counting macros and being cognizant of calories. And then at this time, I got immersed into the bodybuilding, powerlifting world. And so at the time, this really saved me. It changed my mindset from getting as skinny and thin as possible to now getting strong and muscular and feeling empowered and confident in my body. But this didn't really give me a sense of balance. This just moved one type of obsession to another. And I looked good from the outside. I was muscular, had six pack abs, had bicep veins, firm booty, whatever. But I was still incredibly unhappy because I didn't do any of the inner work where I was still in these really negative belief and thought patterns. So it didn't matter what I had physically manifested. I was still so mentally weak and broken. But the gym for me became this place that was a safe haven. It was a space that helped me transcend past my mind, get rid of stress, get rid of anxiety, and just focus in on reconnecting with my body and feeling just connected with myself at a much deeper level. But the problem was I became really addicted to this state of essentially a different state of consciousness. I would exercise two, two and a half hours, still lifting weights really intensely, neglecting rest days. I hated taking rest days. I was still not quite nourishing my body in the proper way. I was just eating for physical purposes. I wasn't trying to really nourish my mind. I had no idea about Ayurveda at that point. So I didn't have any balance and I was still very unhappy. And I remember being my absolute most miserable, even when I looked quote unquote, the healthiest from the outside and most muscular. I was still really depressed and I still felt like I had zero control over my life, which was crazy to think because I think 
sometimes exercise and dieting can give you this false illusion of control. And if you get too caught up with it, it just ends up controlling you. So it wasn't until after college where I started to cultivate a sense of balance. I moved to San Francisco, I got a job in the tech industry, and I felt like I had reclaimed my power in life. And I was out of my toxic home environment, I removed myself a bit from that, and I was just able to create a different reality for myself. But I still just didn't really know how to exercise now. I was now had no negative energy within me and I was just good vibes within me and I had no idea how to exercise. So I remember at one point I was just not feeling like working out. I I don't know what it was, but I would go into the gym, didn't want to lift. I would even cry if I walked in and I just didn't know who I was without it. And I had placed so much of my identity and my ego self on how I looked and how much weight I could lift that without it, I literally didn't know who I was. And so I remember going through this wave of time and then I got this very bizarre intuition to start running. And I hadn't run since my eating disorder days when I thought running was just the best way of burning calories. But I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to try running. So I remember going for a run in San Francisco and running 18 miles I was not training like an endurance athlete at all at that point. I was doing solely like heavy lifting and I would not recommend just running 18 miles. <laughs> That's definitely how you get injured, but it put me in this totally different state of consciousness that I had never experienced before. And I became curious about this. I really felt like my mind was limitless, that my body was the only thing stopping me and that my soul was infinite. And so I decided to go on another run and keep going with it. And there was this one run that completely changed my life. I had an out of body experience and I left my physical body, my ego behind, and I became everything that was surrounding me. I became the blade of grass, all of the blades of grass in the field. I became every drop in the ocean. I became the red paint on the Golden Gate Bridge. I became the laugh of the little child that was laughing as I was passing him by. And I just started crying. I just started crying and laughing and smiling. And I felt this huge wave of absolute release that I just forgave my father and my parents for everything. And I just let it all go. And after that run, I at first thought it was just a runner's high <laughs> and then I couldn't see the world the same. I don't know what had happened to me and I really wish someone like took a brain scan, but something dramatically had shifted and my entire reality changed. And so I became really fascinated. Like what in the world just happened to me? Because I just kind of left my physical body for a moment and just entered a state of absolute bliss. Like what the heck? And so then I started getting really into spirituality and understanding consciousness, understanding reality, understanding all of these different things that are not apparent to the eye. And so that really changed things for me. And it even changed my entire outlook on fitness and my body. I now work out out of complete gratitude and appreciation and love for my body. I acknowledge my mind if I need rest and recovery. My workouts are like amazing moving mode, med moving meditations where I'm able to really master my mind, release my mind, and then feel so in touch with my body. But then again, just feeling an absolute connection with my soul and transcend all of it. So fitness for me has really taken a change. And now I focus all of my energy on mind-body balance so that I can really reconnect with my soul at that deeper level and access those higher levels of consciousness. So that is my condensed story of fitness to spirituality, but if you are interested in more, I do have a full story on my, I do have my full story on my website, chelseamarie.com, and it is also in a podcast episode, which I will also link. Just the Body of Soul podcast, you can find it in the iTunes store, on Stitcher, Google, 
Spotify. So you can check that out, full story. But now I really wanna get into the masterclass. So to start, it's time to wake up. You are creating your own reality. But you may be wondering then why can't I stay motivated to go to the gym consistently? Why can't I stay on point with my diet? Why can't I have self-love? Why am I not living this high vibe life I'm actually wanting to lead and that I deserve? So if you can ask all of these questions, you actually already know all of the answers. Everything that you want to change, everything is already within you. You already hold all of the power. So if you're believing that you aren't a motivated person, you're not going to be motivated to go to the gym. You're manifesting exactly what you're choosing to believe. But the problem is many of us are, we just lack the self-awareness to even know which beliefs are within us. So if your beliefs are self-limiting and you don't acknowledge them, then those beliefs are going to self-sabotage you from reaching your fitness goals and really creating a life that is in alignment with you. So you, you are essentially creating your own personal reality and you're doing it right now, but you might not realize it because you might not be consciously aware of it. So I want you to take a moment and look around you. Where are you? Who are you surrounded with? What are the objects in your environment? Everything that is present in your current reality, you manifest it. So life is like the ultimate game of virtual reality. <laughs> and you get to choose how to experience this world with this avatar, essentially, that you've been given. So for me, it's this girl that happens to be named Chelsea with blonde hair, green eyes, and olive skin. You get to choose how to experience the world. You can select which outfit to wear. You can choose what color you want to dye your hair, what you want to order for lunch, whether you will go to the gym this morning or skip it and press the snooze button. You are really just creating an avatar that is the self and you're cultivating a unique perspective, making different decisions, constructing thoughts that are all shaping who you are and how you're experiencing this game of reality. So when you finally wake up and you realize that this is a game, you can make the decision to play this game consciously and literally live and perceive yourself however you choose to. You have all of the power. We're all on our own kind of choose your own adventure game. So at the core, everything is energy. Oops, looks like the Y got cut off. Just ignore that. <laughs> so the law of attraction and manifestation is based upon this core principle. And this has been proven by physics, taught in Eastern philosophy for centuries, and has been explored in philosophy. So things appear to be solid and separate from each other at the physical level, but at finer levels, and I'm talking atomic, subatomic levels, everything is just pure energy. And we and everything around us is made up of the same energy. So you and I were both the same, we just think we're different, because at the ego level, that's what's creating separateness. But once you remove the ego and just live out of the soul, you will understand that we're all one. So what is the law of attraction? How does this relate? So the law of attraction affirms that energy is magnetic. Energy of a certain vibration attracts similar energy, like attracts like. So whatever energy you put out into the world, that energy is going to be reflected right back to you. So let me give you a quick example. So I have a friend that views the world through the eyes of absolute love and connectedness. He will send me pictures all the time of him finding a heart carved into the concrete on the sidewalk, angel numbers on his food receipts, beautiful sayings graffitied about love in various places. He's seeing elements of the physical world that are matching the energy he puts out. There may be thousands of people that are just walking in the same path that he is, not even realizing it because they're in a different vibrational frequency. They're exuding a different energy, so they're not aware of those little symbols and those messages from the universe. So how does this really work? So when you're focusing your attention on something, you're activating its frequency. So you're looking at something, you're activating its frequency. Frequency is not physical. Frequency is a representation of that vibration, which differs for everybody. So that's why we're all living in our own realities. We can see the same thing, but apply a very different meaning to it. 
So for instance, six pack abs, those might represent dedication, persistence, willpower to you. But for someone else, six pack abs might represent somebody that's unhealthy or malnourished or lacking balance. So you are essentially taking an object that you are perceiving in this physical world and assigning your own meaning to it. And that's allowing it to enter into your reality. So we're really just transmitting energy through our perception and through the senses, which in turn is creating this, this whole reality that we're living in. So you can think when you're opening up Spotify or SoundCloud and you're downloading and hitting play on a song, the song isn't really physical, right? You, you can't touch it, you can't hold it in your hands, but you're still experiencing the song. Your brain is processing the song to be real, but it's not really physical in this world. The same principle is applying to life. You're just transmitting energy, which is producing this reality. So everything is really just a reflection of your perspective and a reflection of whatever energetic frequency you're carrying. It's like the world is your mirror. So how does manifestation work? So no, you... Unfortunately, you can't just think about what you want and magically get it. There are, there is a bit more to that. But in order to manifest something into your life, you have to match your vibration for what you're trying to manifest. So if you want to lose weight and go on a diet and start going to the gym, but you didn't do the inner work in the mind first, you're still in a low vibrational state, the same that's matching your current weight. You're not in the headspace or the vibration of someone who has already lost the weight and achieved the goal. And if you are in that high energy field that matches what you're trying to manifest, you're not going to achieve it. You'll lose motivation. You'll regain the weight back. You're going to still be stuck in your self-limiting beliefs. You have to be an energetic match in order to manifest what you actually want. And that is all starting in your internal reality, which is your thoughts, your beliefs, and those are all resting in the subconscious. So here's a little chart to visualize it. So say at the bottom is an unbalanced mind and body, and that's somebody with like a low vibration. And say you want to get up to a balanced mind and body, which is a high vibration, a high connection with yourself. So let's say that you are here currently, and you want to go up here. Well, you got to match yourself on the energetic vibration level to high in order to get to that balanced mind and body state. You have to match your frequency with what you want to manifest. So it all begins with the subconscious. So did you know that 90% of brain activity is actually beyond conscious awareness? All of your habits, beliefs, patterns, emotions, feelings, those all are resting in the subconscious. Everything that is pretty much running your daily life. And notice how willpower is being exercised at the conscious level. It's not willpower that's keeping you from consistently going to the gym or saying no to the cookie. It's a programming that you've imprinted into your subconscious mind. Whatever you plant into the subconscious mind repeatedly, this includes your habit of hitting the snooze button every morning instead of getting in your meditation or your workout, your habit of eating something sweet after every single meal, or telling yourself how much you hate your body. Those will all manifest a physical reality that matches the vibration of those frequencies. Your subconscious is really just your internal programming. It's creating your internal reality, which is then becoming your external world. So if you're believing that you lack motivation to hit the gym five times a week, you will not find yourself going to the gym five times a week. If you believe that you have zero self-control around sweets, you will find yourself ordering a chocolate chip cookie with your morning coffee when you know it's not necessary. If you believe that losing 10 pounds is too far away and just not attainable, you will not lose the weight. You are programming your subconscious mind with your beliefs. So you need to choose beliefs that are elevating your vibe, not ones that bring you down. And in order to transform the body, to transform your life, you have to transform the mind at the subconscious level. So in the course, the 12 week mind body fit course, I explain exactly how to change your self-limiting beliefs and how to get over those habits, patterns, beliefs, and remove any negative emotions that are really stepping in your way. 
So for instance, say you want to lose five pounds. If you say I'm out of shape, that's a belief. If you say you're snacking when you're not hungry, that's a habit. If you're eating something sweet after every meal, that's a pattern. If you're lacking motivation and sense of worthiness, that's a feeling. You are not gonna get the physical result of losing five pounds if you don't change these beliefs, habits, patterns, and feelings first. You have to change your subconscious in order to really truly reach that goal. So the fitness, fitness goal really has nothing to do with your physical body. <laughs> kind of weird, right? But I'm going to explain. So remember how I was saying that everything is energy? Well, your body is also pure energy. I don't know why this webinar just doesn't want to put the why and we're just, we're just going to be energy. Okay. Energy and why. <laughs> so the physical body is really just an accumulation of atoms with all of their own frequencies and vibrations. So you can think of the atoms of your body as miniature batteries that when all combined, they're generating this powerful energetic force of life. Yeah. Your life, your, your consciousness, you're getting to experience the physical reality in a physical body. So let's go back to that metaphor of life is the ultimate game of virtual reality. So you're given a physical body, which is your avatar. So for me, this is what I look like. This is my avatar, my body in life. And this is the physical body, which is the vessel for consciousness to experience this game of human life reality. This is the body I've been gifted. So I have lifted weights consistently for a few years. I've eaten food in accordance with my goals. And over time, with all my small daily choices, remember you have choices, you have power, I created and sculpted this body. Now we all know that changing your physical body is a lot rooted in exercising and eating a certain amount of food. Of course, genetics and other factors are playing a role here, but in simple terms, move more, eat less, lose weight, move less, eat more, gain weight. If you're balanced with your movement, your bodily functions, and the amount of food you're eating, you will maintain your weight. But if everything is energy and it's only existing because of our perception of being real, then what really is the body? So the body is really just a symbol. It's a representation of a certain frequency which you apply meaning to it. So think back to what I was just describing with law of attraction manifestation. We are focusing in on something, the body, right? Activating the frequency and then applying a meaning to it. So for instance, our society has collectively, keyword collectively, decided on certain values to apply meaning to various body shapes and looks. So common things are like thin is attractive, a muscular body is healthy, dedication, committed, motivated, controlled, body fat is unattractive or lacking self-control. This is what we have collectively decided on the values in society. But remember, we are all living in our very own versions of reality based on our unique perspectives, our unique beliefs. And beliefs are just about reality. They are not reality itself. Therefore, you have the power to assign a different value to the body. All you have to do is reprogram your beliefs and your subconscious mind with a fresh perspective, new data, data that is aligning you with your highest self. So again, we're all living in our own version of reality. You're able to assign different value to it. You have that power. So for instance, here's my physical body. This is just what I look like. At the subtle level, for me personally, when I see this as a symbol of myself, I am thinking mentally and physically strong. Self-love. I'm seeing somebody with balanced hormones because for a long time I did not have balanced hormones and didn't look like this. Somebody that's empowered, proud, gratitude, healthy relationship with food, confidence, balanced. This side is looking different for everyone. Okay. We all have different body types, different body shapes, different fitness goals, but these subtle levels, these subtle elements 
these values we're applying to that physical body, this side can be the same for anybody, regardless of how you look. The body is simply a representation of the value you choose to believe. And when you're shifting your perspective away from viewing the body as purely physical and instead really just a representation of an energetic vibration, you can actually move past those cultural values, those standards of beauty, and you realize that no matter how you look, you are always perfection, so long as you believe that you are. Now, setting goals with intention. So I like to set aligned goals. So what is an aligned goal? An aligned goal is a goal that is built upon the intention of raising one's vibration to ultimately match the frequency of the goal itself, bringing you closer to your highest self. Remember with manifestation, you have to match your frequency and your vibration to the goal you're trying to achieve in order for it to come into physical existence. So an aligned goal, if you look at it as ego and soul, an aligned goal is not based upon proving something to someone else, shifting another person's perspective about yourself because you're really not doing that. Every, everybody's perspective about you is really just you perceiving that perspective. But an aligned goal is based on raising your own vibration, living more high vibe, right? And that's going to put out really good energy and positively impact the people around you. An aligned goal is something that's going to really shift your perspective and it's going to serve you to be your highest self. And before even setting a goal, please do know that true happiness always and only will be existing in the here and now. So if you're thinking that getting a fit ton body is going to magically solve all of your life problems, you'll finally be happy. No, it doesn't really work like that. I started my fitness journey thinking the same. But in order to really reach your aligned goal, you have to elevate yourself mentally and internally first. So how does this work? Say at the physical level, you want to lose five pounds. So it's not really the physical change you're going after. You might think you want five pounds, but it could be you're actually trying to fit society's standards of beauty. Or maybe you're trying to stop emotional eating because you realize that you're not really acknowledging your body's true hunger levels. So if you were to just stop eating out of stress or out of anxiety or any other emotion, then losing five pounds actually makes a lot of sense because it would put you in really good balance. So what would the true intention be when you really get down to it? True intention of the one on the left side, which is rooted in the ego, would be, I want to prove my self-worth. That is not going to help you. <laughs> now, if your intention is you want to reclaim power and self-love instead of placing it into the hands of other people, that is going to help propel you to reach that fitness goal so much easier. And it's going to help you stop the emotional eating because you're going to be eating out of love and nourishment. And that in turn is going to hit up to that physical level and the goal of losing five pounds. So again, looking at this chart, say you want to lose five pounds and your real intention is to reclaim self-love. So now maybe since you're lacking self-love, you're at a lower vibrational state, which is putting you a little bit unbalanced, the mind and body, but you really want to be up here. Remember, you got to match yourself internally in order to externally match the goal you want to manifest. So please keep in mind that you're focusing on a feeling. It's not really a physical change. When you're changing your vibration to match that feeling you're desiring, those physical results will manifest. So get really deep with your goals and try to understand why am I trying to achieve this fitness goal? And if it's aligned with serving your soul and not your ego, then you're on the right track. But if it's something that is aligned with the ego, you may want to rethink it because it's not going to bring you that balance that you're really looking for. So before we hop into Ayurveda, we'll do a quick recap. So you create your reality. Remember, like attracts like with the law of attraction. You have to match your frequency to manifest what you want. Everything is in the subconscious. The body is just a physical representation of energy. Set goals that are rooted in the soul, not the ego, and match your vibe to the goal, which is really just a feeling that you're after. So now on to Ayurveda. So what is Ayurveda? So Ayurveda is the world's longest standing health system rooting in India over 5,000 years ago. So Ayurveda is focused on balancing the mind and the body through diet, exercise, environment, meditation, self-care, and overall lifestyle. 
It's really all about the mind-body connection. So there are really five elements that are creating the foundation of this entire physical world and our bodies, which is ether and space, ether or space, air, fire, water, and earth. So in Ayurveda, these elements are combined into three subtle energy bodies known as the doshas. So the pitta dosha is the elements of fire and water, vata is air and ether, kapha is water and earth. So these mind-body types are explaining physical and mental characteristics that are going to influence your personal well-being. And we all have all three doshas, but we have one or two that are dominating our being. So I'm going to quickly go over the doshas before we really dive in. So for vata, this is air and space. So common physical attributes, somebody that is naturally thin and slender, taller, smaller eyes, dry skin, hair, tendencies, they have a lot of energy, but they can also experience fatigue really quickly. They're very active. They're creative thinkers. They talk fast. They're lively. They don't like cold weather. They have a tendency to overthink and can suffer from anxiety, fear, insomnia, and dry skin, hair, brittle bones, cold hands, and feet. So somebody that is pitta has the fire and water element. So physically, somebody looks medium build, stronger, they're naturally muscular, their skin can burn easily, or they can get rashes or skin irritation as well. They're very decisive, ambitious, high energy, they're disciplined, these are the people that you're usually very on point and rigid with your diet and workout plans. <laughs> Some imbalances would be if they have aggravated digestion, they have skin rashes, excessive body heat, indigestion, or if they're really acting out of aggression towards other people. Now for kapha, these are the elements of earth and water. So somebody that is a little bit heavier build, they can put on weight a bit easier. They have thick hair, smooth, oily skin, but their tendencies are they're very loving, they're peaceful, they're grounded, they're calm, they're really easy to talk to. Imbalances would be they have a hard time with really staying motivated and getting to the gym. They might overeat, might have excessive sleep or being feeling insecure. So going into nutrition with Ayurveda. So we all know that food provides the body with energy to survive at the physical level, right? So food is affecting all of the functions of the body, giving us energy to hit the gym, crush our workouts, and really build our physical body, such as muscle and fat tissues. So that is the first level of nourishment, which is the calories, macronutrients, vitamins, minerals. Those are all affecting physical body. But there's another energetic layer to food that's not so apparent. Food is affecting us at a deeper level, the same way as our impressions of the world around us and all of the experiences we're living through are shaping who we are. So food has this subtle energy that is affecting the mind and the soul. In Ayurveda, the non-physical energies of food are known as the three ganas. So food can be classified as sattvic. So sattvic foods are unprocessed, whole foods that are the healthiest for the mind and body, like this gorgeous smoothie bowl that you want to take pictures of and put up on Instagram. These are fruits, vegetables, plant-based proteins, whole grains. Rajasic foods are more processed foods, foods that are more stimulating and denser. It could be like your matcha latte that gets you through the day, spicy foods, coffee, tea, sugar, meat, eggs, potatoes, root vegetables. Now, tamasic foods are the, the junk food or the highly processed foods, fried, fatty foods that make you feel physically sluggish, lazier, and just not very healthy. So those are the three ganas of food. These are the three subtle energetic layers of food. Now, each of the ganas correlate to the ganas of the mind. Remember that food is impacting your mind. So sattvic foods are related to the gana sattva, which is a sense of calmness, serenity, centeredness, vitality, pure consciousness, honesty, and in being truthful and aligned. Rajasic foods are related to rajas, which is that energy, the passion, a bit of the restlessness, some stimulation, a lot of movement, striving towards something. Tamasic foods related to tamas. 
So this is food that's going to make you feel sleepy and lethargic and kind of lazy and weak and a bit, a bit stale. And this is why you might find yourself feeling super motivated to exercise and make really great decisions throughout the day if you start your day off with a nourishing, healthy breakfast. Or if you're eating some really gross junk food or like a ton of cookies, you might start to feel a lot of shame and self-loathing and it's going to be impacting your psyche. So this isn't to say that physical energy of food, the calories, macronutrients don't affect you. They totally play a role, but simply if you eat fewer calories than your body needs, like you will lose weight. If you eat more calories, you'll gain weight. Same calories you'll maintain. But at the core level, when you change your food, you're really not just changing your physical body. You are changing your mind with Ayurveda. So when you're working with both Ayurveda and trying to reach a fitness goal, you need to really focus on filling your calories, your macronutrients with the right foods that are going to bring balance to the mind and the body, which are primarily those sattvic foods that relate to the gana of sattva. And that's going to really raise your vibration and it's going to make it so much freaking easier to achieve your fitness goals because you're nourishing yourself for your body and through your mind. And that's really elevating you to achieve what you want to achieve. So now how does this relate to movement? So when we move our bodies during exercise, we're really just circulating energy. So for instance, you are eating oatmeal before your workout. And that's literally giving you the energy from the calories in the food to go for a run or lift weights or do whatever. And as you're moving your body, there's chemicals that are being released, hormones, responses, you're expending energy, your heart rate's getting up, you're experiencing that, that feeling of highness. And you start really sweating and you're burning away those units of energy, essentially. And then you have your post-workout meal. And then after that, it's really just a process continuing through the day where you're just cycling through energy from food, from movement, and it's repeating over and over again. But remember how I said with food that there's two levels. Well, there's also two levels of energy for exercise. So what I just described is the first level of energy, how the body is using food calories to carry out physiological functions and movement. Now there's also the subtle energy level. So this is the level you cannot see with your own two eyes or really feel with touch. When you're exercising and moving your physical body, you're actually awakening the subtle body. And so movement is guiding the life force energy through the subtle energy centers known as the chakras. And as you're opening up the chakras throughout your body, remember chakras are really just energy centers that you, you can't physically see, but they're present and they're all related to something different of your being. Now, when you're moving and you're exercising, you're allowing energy to go from ego, the root chakra, and moving up towards the soul into the crown chakra. And so when you're able to move up the energy, you're able to meet with your soul, which is at the highest level at the crown chakra, the highest elevation of your existence. So if you've ever meditated before, you might know this kind of sensation I'm talking about, or if you've ever done Kundalini Yoga, you're in essence, in essence, dissociating yourself from remaining solely in the ego, the rootness of the physical body, and you're surpassing the mind as well. And you're flowing through the sensations and really reconnecting with yourself at a deeper, more spiritually elevated level. So another way you could think about it is, if you've ever gone to the gym, put your headphones in and got into a total flow with your workout, like the hour just flies by, you finish your workout wondering what, what did I even just do? And you feel amazing and you feel alive. Well, you were in a, essentially a meditative state. You were just maybe not consciously aware of it. You transcended both the mind and the body and you were able to connect with your inner self, your soul. So if you are thinking, well, I've never experienced that, or like every workout just feels like eternity, then you're in a lower vibrational frequency. And now you can acknowledge that. And it's not you, it's not the workout that caused that reaction. It is actually just you. So it's the energetic frequency you're choosing to exist in. Remember, you are creating your reality. You could have two people going for a run. If one person is thinking over and over again, I hate running, I hate running, they're not going to enjoy running. But if the other person is thinking, 
running is going to put me in this beautiful meditative state to reconnect with my soul and transcend my mind and my body. That person is going to have a way better time on that run and they're going to experience literally a different level of consciousness. So everything is really just starting in the mind and all of the exercise is really affecting the mind and the body differently. And this is where Ayurveda really comes into play. So to start, there are, there's thousands of workout plans out there that you can just download off the internet and follow. But how do you know if the workout plan is actually right for you? So according to Ayurveda, remember, we each have those different mind-body types or the dosha constitutions that are relating to our physical characteristics, our tendencies, mental states. And lifestyle factors, including exercise, are affecting our dosha balance. So depending on your dosha, you will naturally be drawn to certain forms of exercise. So similar to law of attraction, right? So the vachas are those people that are constantly moving. So of course, they're going to prefer things that have a lot of movement involved, like running, spin classes, dancing, circuit training, cardio, those crazy like vinyasa flows where they're doing 100 chaturangas. And pitta, those natural born competitive athletes, they're gonna like competitive sports, lifting hard, heavy weights, doing intense interval training. And then kapha, that is just really wanting to chill and just watch Netflix and relax, they're gonna not really wanna exercise. <laughs> they're gonna prefer to just like chill on the couch and just maybe briskly walk. So for an example, for me, I am a vata pitta. So that is why I'm drawn to a lot of movement that is challenging my endurance. So the vata in me and strength, which is the pitta, which is why I personally enjoy running and strength training. And I have to keep both in my exercise routine in order to feel a sense of balance and to feel aligned with the vata and a pitta energy. But remember, the connection between the mind and body is all about balance. So you do have to counterbalance in order to keep the balance to begin with. So vatas, they want to balance out all of that movement. So lower rep strength training, yin yoga. So instead of doing all those crazy vinyasa flows, they need to do types of yoga that are more grounding and meditating and putting them in a more restful kapha state. For a pitta, they should also counterbalance with something like cardio, which could get more vata, but then also yin yoga. That's again, putting them in that kapha state of being where they just need to slow down and chill and allow for recovery to come about. For kapha, they really just need to get moving. So the counterbalance for them is really strength training and yoga flows such as vinyasa or power yoga. So lots of more movement for the kapha to elevate the vata and the pitta. So the best workout plan is really the one that is creating the balance between the mind and the body. When you're balancing your mind and your body, you're able to reconnect with yourself and really live in full alignment with the highest version of who you are. So in my course, I go into way more detail and about nutrition, Ayurveda, and exercise for the different doshas, and how to really keep your mind and your body in balance while still reaching your physical fitness goal. And I do include 12 week workout plans. So I would highly recommend checking out the course if you're really interested in starting a workout routine that is keeping both mind and body in mind and is a lot more customized to who you are to really help you achieve your fitness goals, but then also connect with your inner self and grow spiritually. So to recap, what you learned everything is energy. Remember that it's all vibrating at different frequencies. You learned that your internal reality is creating your external. You learned that the body is really just a representation of a frequency that you are getting the ability to assign value to. Soul aligned goals are what is going to bring you closer to your highest self. When you change your food, you can change your mind and your body. Exercise affects you at physical and subtle levels. And to achieve your fitness goals and live in a high vibration state, mind-body balance is vital. Okay, so I want to talk about a course that I have coming up, and this is an exclusive beta, and it will be launched really soon. It's a mind-body transformation course called the Mind-Body Fit Program. So this is an online 12-week course that includes a 12-week workout plan that is completely customized to your unique body types. So taking into account your physical characteristics, your mental tendencies, a lot of this is based upon Ayurvedic principles. So a lot of what we have discussed 
there's nine activating content modules. So each module has me talking in video form and actionable workbooks as well. So the workbooks will allow you to really integrate and implement all of the course material into your life. So the content includes some of what we have talked about, but in way more depth. So we'll talk about law of attraction, manifestation, discovering exactly what is stopping you from achieving your fitness goals and achieving your life. So really shape-shifting your subconscious beliefs, habits, patterns, and also tons about Ayurveda. So you'll get full information about Ayurvedic nutrition, how to eat right for your mind body type, and how to really feel good and nourish yourself and a ton about mindful eating. I get questions all of the time with people struggling with overeating or not being able to make healthy decisions. So there's a whole section dedicated to eating more mindfully and nourishing your body and your mind with the types of foods that you're selecting and how to do like actionable strategies that keep you from overeating or making the wrong decision. There's also going to be a lot included in the content modules on mindset shifts around exercise. So changing your viewpoint about exercise to being this opportunity to connect with your mind and your body and really just flow through your workouts like moving meditations. And all of this content is really leading up into you creating the perfect wellness high vibe lifestyle. I want to give you all of the content, the tools, the knowledge and expertise that you need to make the change in your life because when it comes down to it, you know what is best for your lifestyle and nobody can change your mind or your body except for you. So it's really up to you to integrate all of this knowledge and really put it into practice and experience it. So with all of this content, there's also a video library of exercises for all of the different workouts. So again, I get asked all the time, like, how do I do this exercise? Or I can't find a video online that is like actually teaching me how to do it. The form looks off or I'm not feeling the movement. Well, I'm going to make a whole video library where I'm showing you exactly the form to use for certain exercises so that you do feel the mind body connection, because that is so important, both on a subconscious and on a physical level for achieving your goals. Plus, this includes a mindful eating journal that is not just based on calories and macros like a lot what you see it really integrates ayurveda so again relating back to the subtle energies of food and the ganas and keeping track of how certain foods are actually making you feel so that you can stay in balance with your doshas and there's tons of practices as well as how to eat more mindfully and practical tips and strategies so that you can really develop a really great solid relationship with food because it's important food is energy Food is nourishment for the mind and body, and it's meant to serve you and help you and elevate you. And in this 12-week program, you get weekly check-in calls with me. So you get check-in calls where I'm going to do hour-long question and answers and share any more information and knowledge. And it's going to be a great time to just converse and answer any questions, learn something more talk about any things you might be struggling with. I'm here to coach you through it and you get access to me as well. 24 hour guaranteed response time for a text and email. And then it's not just me you get to interact with. You also get a private Facebook community. So remember who you surround yourself with and the people that you're just inviting into your life that is creating the energy around you is creating your energetic field and you need to keep yourself surrounded with high vibe people that are all striving to achieve their physical fitness goals and really transform their mind body and their life so there's also exclusive bonuses offered with this webinar offer so you get a free one hour coaching call with me you get master classes from wellness experts from Ayurveda, mindful eating, manifestation, law of attraction, subconscious shifting, neuroscience, and more. And this is every single week for 12 weeks. There's also guided post-workout meditations. I absolutely love meditating after my workouts, and I'm going to be guiding you through different visualization techniques, different ways to practice self-love and self-compassion. There's also going to be yoga flows that are for recovery and soul connection that my lovely yoga teacher friend, Annie, is gonna be recording. And there's also a plant-based Ayurvedic recipe book. So you can actually start 
easily cooking up meals that are really correlated to your mind body type or your dosha. And you, of course, get discounts on future courses and private coaching. So the Mind Body Fit course for only webinar viewers and for this beta, it's an exclusive price of only $497 a one-time payment or three payments of 185. And so when you think about it, like if you're working with a personal trainer right now or taking sessions at the gym, that's like $100 per session. And if you're doing that five times a week, you're already at $500. But this course is gonna give you so much more information and knowledge and integration for how to really make those changes in the internal level so that you can really manifest the physical results that you are desiring and that you so deserve to get. So this is a course that is jam-packed with information and actionable insights that is gonna lead you and guide you through your entire transformation. This is focused on balancing the mind and the body because when you balance the mind and body, you are able to really connect with yourself on a much deeper level, deeper than you probably are thinking you are connected right now. You have a soul that you're gifted in this lifetime that you you're need to connect with, and you can do that through taking care of yourself physically and mentally. So this is really a solid investment in yourself, and it's not only going to bring you closer and have you really achieve your fitness goals, it's really going to transform you and transform your life, because fitness really isn't just about achieving a physical fitness goal like we had talked about. It's really about achieving a feeling and really creating an energetic force and aura around you. So this is a transformational course for mind and body and fitness. And there are limited spots. I'm keeping this pretty tight knit because I do want to cultivate a really grounded, supportive community. And there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one with me as well with the free coaching one hour call and the amount of time I'm going to be taking for weekly Q&A calls and just staying on top of communication. So there is a limited number of spots, so make sure to reserve. There's also a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you're not finding the value or you're not feeling satisfied with the course, no worries, you will get your money back within the first 30 days. And so to join, you can email me at chels at chelseamarie.com. Remember, this is a beta and this is a webinar only price, which is why I would like you to email me. So C-H-E-L-S at chelseamarie.com if you're interested. And if you have any questions about this course specifically or joining or anything about it, please just email me and let me know and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I really believe that fitness has the power to bring you closer to your soul and really transform yourself from the inside and outwards. And for me, fitness was, like I said, the catalyst for my spiritual journey. And it is granting me so much of the opportunity to connect with my mind and my body and my soul. And I've reached an amazing state of self-love and gratitude. And I know that you can achieve that as well. And you totally deserve it. So... That wraps up the entire masterclass. So if you are having any questions related to any of the topics covered in this masterclass, any questions related to the Mind Body Fit course, just shoot me an email and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And yeah, I hope to connect with you very soon. If you're not already, you can follow me on Instagram at she is Chelsea Marie. And you can check out my website, chelseamarie.com, for tons of other free resources related to fitness, law of attraction, manifestation, and Ayurveda. So make sure to check that out. And I am so grateful that you have taken the time to really expand your knowledge and expand your consciousness with this masterclass. Thank you again, and have a lovely rest of your day or rest of your evening.